and welcome to this webinar on how leading universities in Australia are meeting prospects needs. My name is Jeremy McGann and I'm Principal Client Advisor here at Global Reviews. Uh, my job basically is to um, analyse the data from our studies and to present back the insights and recommendations to our clients. So this webinar shows the results from our recent higher learning uh, DSE, Digital Sales Effectiveness Study, um, conducted in Q4 of last year. We focus on prospective students and their behaviour and experience when um, on the university website when trying to find courses that interest them. In particular today we look at the student mindset, just a little snippet of what they're thinking about, what, what's important to them, how uh, top performing Australian universities are helping prospects meet their needs. <coughs> Excuse me. And how um, particular design patterns on key pages can improve the user experience. I'm also going to share a couple of little sound bites from our recent UK DSE study. We'll, pre we'll be presenting this at our higher education learning our marketing conference at the end of the month. Hopefully we'll see some of you there. Um, and then I'll go through the um, global reviews and methodology at the end. So just to cover some of the key insights um, that we're going to look at today and uh, the examples that I'll show you from some of those leading Australian universities. So when it comes to locating a course range, so this could be a business course, accounting course, um, a category, um, browse behaviour dominates. So basically we see people, rather than using search, that they click on the um, category titles. Obviously this depends on um, the different universities, but this is pretty much a standard pattern across all universities. Uh, search also needs to, however, work effectively because we need to be also catering to these uh, audiences who have different needs, different behaviours, who are at different stages in their journey. And we see that we have, um, in a lot of cases, a global search and a core search. And depending on um, user behaviour as to how, where this is interacted with, we see different universities um, approaching this a little bit differently. Um, and um, <coughs> we also look at kind of other patterns that help students discover. So those students that uh, are looking by audience type or have a career in mind, they're not really sure what they want to do. And given that um, almost half of UK prospects don't either know what course they want to study or have a clear idea of the interest area they want to study, other patterns need also to be considered. Returning prospects are not being catered to, so most sites have just facilitated single visits. We start to see some functionality coming out in, for some universities and how they're catering to this. But really it's not a, um, a feature that uh, we see very prominently across any of these sites, which is kind of interesting given that, you know, we'd never expect this to be a single um, site visit we definitely see this as being multiple um, visit journey. Uh, then look, we'll look at the kind of the information hierarchy of the course content and how that plays a role in helping prospects find what they're looking for and then how cutting that content by a different ways is also an important consideration. So not just only allowing them to search or to find stuff um, by a particular way but also how we structure and present content um, in a different way. And then um, helping prospects compare course options. Again, this isn't a, a commonly adopted feature in higher learning, but it's been used to great effect in other industries um, to help prospects find a product that's right for them. And we will look at um, an example of um, a university that are currently doing this and how they're doing it. So this is um, an overview of the study that was conducted um, Q4 last year. So it was conducted between September and November. We had over 600 participants and we have 18 university brands included in that. And here's um, a selection of those. Some of whom we work with directly, such as Deakin, University of Tasmania, and some of whom are included in part of the study. So universities nominate um, a number of universities that they want to include that they're interested in or who they see as their competitors. This is the ranking, the overall ranking from our DSE study. So I'll go into the detail of how those scores um, 
work, but basically um, this is the overall uh, score we get that, that provides our benchmark. So who's leading overall? This is an aggregate of all the lower scores. So we can see Deakin there at the top. And if we look at University of South Australia, who we'll be looking at a bit in the next few slides, while they're lower down, um, they're still uh, leading, or still doing really well in some of the lower category scores. So this is the rolled up score, but we'll also be seeing when we break it down on the next slide, what that picture changes slightly. And I think what's interesting here is that we've, you know, there's a lot of middle ground. So a lot of universities that are, you know, performing comparatively the same um, and not a lot who are really standing out from the crowd. Then if we go down to the our categories and our subcategory scores, so we've got initial engagement, introducing options, evaluating those options, facilitating decisions, channel selection and applying online. So there are basically different categories and then within them we split them down into subcategories and we can see then who's leading in each of those subcategories. And these are all made up of a mixture of um, a consumer audit, uh, consumer tasks and the features and functions audit of which there's over 150 criteria um, which we measure and it's a binary audit, yes, no. Consumer audit is where we ask them questions um, about their priorities, um, confidence, satisfaction, uh, issues they encountered, and then um, the task then is where we get them to specifically conduct tasks. For example, you're interested in looking at all the business courses, find uh, the page that shows you all the business courses. So we can see here that no one university is kind of leading um, in any area. And what this tells us is that, you know, we can learn a lot from different universities, but that also there's no one right answer um, to, the problems that we're trying to, or the challenges we're trying to address for students. So let's have a quick look at the student mindset. So if we're thinking about the most important web elements, so um, rating how important um, elements would be in a website when deciding on a degree or course at the university. So we can see kind of typical hygiene factors are the highest priority. It's easy to understand information, it's easy to navigate, information is detailed and complete, and the ability to plan online. The ability to plan online is the number one uh, priority for um, those in the UK um, when deciding on a degree or course in university. We have this um, also done for the UK DSE study, and we'll be sharing that with you in, at the conference. So then after the highest priority, kind of the hygiene factors, course information is the most important to prospective students. So here kind of highlighted in red, um, the ability to see a uh, course based on entry requirements is uh, one of the highest priorities. And we'll look at the task for that later on and who's doing well in that. Um, ability to compare course options, um, tools that help um, me to understand the course is right for me and then the ability to compare course options offered by other universities. And then um, follow kind of by the information on the university itself. So about its performance, being able to print or download information, general information about the university life, review of courses, student reviews. So again, this just kind of gives us an idea of, of um, the types of ways that we should be prioritizing our information or the types of features and functions that we're potentially going to build on a site. So then looking at the kind of match to needs, so very much about finding the course and then locating um, uh, the entry requirements. We look at kind of over half um, of participants have issues on university websites when it comes to uh, matching to needs. Um, so we can see that kind of from the, so the, the Victoria Nini um, down on there on the right hand side and then the types of information that they um, uh, report on 20% overall in the whole of the study say it took a long time to find information uh, finding where to start wasn't easy so again looking at signposting and um, uh, how we're navigating people to different and signposting different um, information to prospects we also look at 13% uh, on terms or words weren't here. So again, this is about jargon using um, higher education language as opposed to catering to those who might not be familiar with the um, this type of terminology, or at least if you're using this type of terminolo terminology that you're also um, enabling them to understand what it means. 
So this again really is about you know matching their mental mo mental model with the website's mental model about how we as a university think about our information, but how a prospective student thinks about the information. So then we saw that Deacon kind of were overall for the DSE study, and when we asked um, prospects to tell us what they felt was the um, uh, you know the best for overall experience when when uh, researching options, um, we see the University of South Australia coming out um, on top there. Deacon not too far behind, but um, we'll look at what University of South Australia are doing in terms of matched needs. Um, and locating the product range. So uh, one of the things that we do um, as part of our studies, because they're conducted over a number of years, we're able to identify patterns or behavior changes. So we can see when things are starting to become popular, uh, where features and functions maybe on uh, sites outside the industry are starting to uh, become more dominant. Um, and then we can start to see how that might cross over into other industries. So. For example, we can see there's a kind of growing preference for self-service. So using online FAQs or help sections or media assistance using online chat continues to kind of grow in popularity. <clears throat> um, FAQs is always an interesting one because, you know, we've often heard that they're kind of redundant, but there's definitely, we still see a definite need for them. It's just how they're being done um, is the, is the um, I, I suppose, is the key thing here. It's not just about having a separate FAQ section that sits over on its own. It's about having integrated um, FAQs and integrated search and contextualized so that it's not, you know, something that sits um, siloed away from, from the content that it's actually related to. We can see that the telephone channel is becoming less popular for students. So even though um, being able to contact the university is a really high priority for them, it might not necessarily be by the phone. Um, so again, you know, as we'd expect, um, prospective students are kind of more willing to solve problems on the university website and then, um, so they're more forgiving, if you like, when it comes to trying to find stuff on the university website um, than they would be on other sites, for example. So we'd see a higher rate of abandonment from other industry sectors if they'd incurred a problem because there is uh, less um, loyalty there and it's more fickle. They're more promiscuous, um, but obviously that behaviour doesn't translate to university, so they're more forgiving. But again, that can mean that we are often not doing enough to then meet their needs. So we're going to take a look at a couple of the categories that I, we looked at earlier on. So the first one is around helping prospects locate the course range. So this falls within our introducing options category. So where you're um, showing students about the types of options you have and helping them understand what those course options are and locate them. So just a kind of a little, um, extract from the UK study, we know the third of UK prospects don't know what, a, what course they want to research, but have a broad area of the interest area. So what this tells us is that helping people find um, those interest areas is really important, but also um, helping them understand the courses um, that they, um, options that they have within those course areas, but also to enable that serendipitous discovery as well, that it's not just um, keeping them down this siloed view that they might have, that we want to show them the breadth of courses that they have, because as we know, our needs change over time. And what we start off thinking is right for us, we might discover, you know, is not as we, as we do more research or as when we're in the course itself. So the first task was locating the course, the range of courses. This was for business courses or accounting courses, depending on the university. Um, and as we can see, kind of speed doesn't necessarily correlate with confidence and satisfaction. So either end of the, the two universities there of South Australia and Macquarie, um, they had the highest confidence and satisfaction, but they didn't have the fastest time. So again, speed doesn't necessarily um, align with confidence and this is really about ensuring that um, I know I've, I'm confident I've found all the course ranges for business um, and I was satisfied with how I found them. So um, again these are the top universities but while it took longer it didn't necessarily mean they were more satisfied or confident or less satisfied or confident. I beg your pardon. So industry leader Macquarie's browse pathway scored 100% so we see 43% uh, taken through the um, study uh, area at the top and then on the mega menu, the area of study. So again, we're looking at here the difference in browse behavior over search behavior. We can see that um, a lot then are going 
in, in Macquarie's uh, um, case are going through the uh, mega menu, the study, and what they have done there is they've kind of kept that initial primary navigation selection um, very narrow so that it's very much about, um, uh, you know, a clear signposting, um, mutually exclusive categories so that someone is very clear about when they click on this, what they should expect to find there. So those who click on the area studies are brought to the interest area section of the find a course. Um, the search bar is kind of concealed below the fold. So we know what I'm looking for um, there and then I'm interested in. So again, those that click then on accounting, which is the, the task for those in Macquarie, could take our business, if I could pardon, um, no, it was accounting, um, click on business and then they see the accounting and then they get all the accounting courses there. So 28% did use the search to get started, um, which uh, similarly to the University of South Australia brings a vis visitor to an integrated course and content site search. So this is the global search, it's not the um, course search, um, but here we can see that the courses have been um, uh, catered to if someone starts at the global search level. So um, I think you know, while they have a 100% success rate, and this is unusual, um, they were kind of aided by the first position of that interest area, but also, you know, it was two easy clicks, so clear signposting um, and page titles from both the homepage and the area of interest helped to achieve that 100% success rate that we saw there. So University of South Australia, um, again, like Macquarie, they start off uh, with a very narrow set of uh, categories at the, at the top. Um, they're 95% um, go through this way. Uh, we do see 5% looking at the mega me or the hamburger menu, big pardon, but this doesn't behave in the way that they expect yeah. it to behave. So we can see the categories there are mimicked um, in yeah. terms of those that are um, on the main page, the main sign posting. So most go back from here. So they don't use a mega menu, unlike um, Macquarie, to kind of navigate to deeper child pages. Rather, they take visitors to a very specific uh, starting point, and from there, yeah, they provide well, different um, navigational uh, pathways. So here we can see um, the find a degree, um, uh, search uh, a particular study area, or uh, by audience type, and then by um, specific study areas within the audience type. So half kind of choose to interact with those conversational needs based finder, um, which is I, I want a career um, as a and then they enter their desired career um, and then the other half interact directly with the discipline title. Uh, this takes them then down to the accounting and finance landing page um, and a small percent, percentage interact with the course search. Um, and this again provides a route, a route to courses and skips the discipline page that I just showed there um, and then kind of opens up that com pathway to comparison. So this takes them to the, um, I suppose, a, a, an integrated uh, global course search finder. And we can see then the filters down the side. So I suppose the approach that UniSA uh, take here is to kind of progressively, progressively reveal pathways um, which move a visit in a more guided journey. And they cater to that um, different needs right um, kind of once they get into that study landing page. Um, so the, I suppose the key here is that choice is provided um, but the option there is to um, go down the category page as well. So it's catering to multiple different needs there. So Latrobe, um, so Latrobe uh, start off by showing uh, the search for a course uh, straight up front, but also the subject areas. Um, they very much cater to, I suppose, prospective students. Um, we see that 35% um, navigate through the mega menu. So again, they have different ways of, of being able to access the data even from the mega menu, not just from the home page. Um, Fortunate navigate through the course tile on the home page and then this takes them to the interest area where they go down further. And then uh, once they interact with that then they go to the uh, the subject area itself and then they see all the different courses that they can do there. And again at this level they're able to filter. Um, so 
what La Trobe do is get people to go down to a certain level um, to select that business area they're interested in before they then allow them to kind of filter by, for example, audience. Some interact with uh, all the course, see all the courses, and again, this just takes them to the um, choose an interest area page. Only 2% interact with the course search. Um, now, this may be because they're um, asked to seek a range of courses rather than one course. Um, however, it's just interesting the different behaviors here. So, uh, Latrobe, unlike um, Macquarie and UniSA, um, offer two pathways from the home page. Um, they don't reveal more pathways to search, but rather offer a very concise IA. So um, it's very much a browse-based journey. And then once they get down to the specific subject area, then they're um, enabling people to um, filter those course options by need. Um, and I suppose what this requires <laughs> is strong grouping, um, but also that you uh, have uh, very strong crossovers um, between courses and, and areas of interest um, in, uh, for stuff that sits across multiple um, subject areas, for example. So I suppose what Latrobe do do is they enable prospects to find courses by other means. So your ATAR, so um, this is the score that obviously um, high school students graduate with. So while they might know a course, they might have a course in mind, but they also might want to know what courses they can look at based on their scores. Um, they also show by study level, mode or duration. So if it's online or offline, they might just want to do a short course or if it's a degree um, and also by campus location. This is a consideration, uh, particularly in Australia because it's so large, where universities have multiple campuses. And again, this is just catering to those students who may be limited by where they can go. Um, La Trobe also do some work around uh, making it easier for visitors returning to continue their exploration. So you can save um, your courses and then you can access these anywhere from the top menu on the website. And then they also can download and share um, the course information from the course page as well. So we've seen, you know, nice score increases there for uh, La Trobe um, or around comparing with other unis and overall in returning prospects. So strong uh, global search pathways are definitely um, uh, a common denominator across those leading universities. So it's not just about having the core search, but also enabling the global site search to cater to that. Uh, uh, finding courses. So Macquarie Elevate and visually highlight an interest area in the search results page. You also cut it by um, the tabs. You can see all courses or other systems, um, which kind of is a bit of a meaningless title. Um, but then we also see um, kind of the multiple selectors available to allow students to um, kind of filter or um, narrow down their course options. And from here, they can compare the different courses too. So. Um, and um, recently we've seen QUT um, have launched a more needs matching assistance tool. So they can choose to tailor the website to their needs. So again, instead of just seeing everything, they can say, right, I'm a high school student, show me all the things that um, I can do or um, re restructure the information so that it's catered to me. Um, then um, if they're not sure what they want to study, there is a needs matching tool. Um, and then they've got different other um, needs matching on coming back to uni, I'm a career advisor, my child ready for uni, so different audience types as well. So we know that university sites are complex. Um, they have there's a lot of information, um, thousands and thousands of pages, um, and they have a need to cater to multiple different audience types. If we're looking at those um, around who are more successful in helping prospective students, um, they, we see them limiting those features at the start. So they're providing clear navigation and signposting um, at the very start based on the audience type. Uh, this helps to kind of reduce the cognitive load. I'm very confident about that it's this area I need to go into to find what I'm looking for. Um, and then they're 
um, getting them to the right area before they're then providing them with further functionality to help them find and discover courses. What they're also doing is um, providing multiple pathways to cater to those different needs. So um, those students that are at, um, who have a very specific course in mind versus those that are not sure um, what they want to do versus those who have an, a specific interest area in mind. So again, or who identify themselves with a different, with a, a, as a particular type of, of student. So, um, and again, search plays into that, where we're not just um, catering to helping them find specific courses or courses in an area, but also enabling them to discover courses that might also be suitable for them through the use of additional filters or through the use of good search um, functionality. Okay, so we're going to move on now to um, helping prospects match their needs. So that was locating the course range. Um, this moves into the kind of evaluating options where we give them a very specific task around finding specific entry requirements. Um, and as we know, this is one of the, uh, one of the higher priorities um, when it comes to um, using websites. Um, in the UK, the University of Exeter are leading for helping prospects match to needs. Um, so let's take a look at what they're doing in Australia. So earlier I touched on the different types of inputs we have into our study. So this is an example here where we can see the consumer audit, so that's the impressions of the course page. So they're shown the course page and then they're asked to um, rate it against a number of criteria. And then this is the overall average. And then match to needs. So this is a task that they're given specifically to find entry requirements around specific criteria. And then we have our features and functions audit, which is a course detail page. These are features and functions we'd expect to find on a course page. So we can see that University of Southern South Australia are leading across all those um, criteria um, measured. And then other um, notable uh, performance are um, UQ, ECU, and then Curtin. So we see some performing well in some areas and some not performing well in other areas. So again, a bit of a mix. So it's very interesting from the University of South Australia point of view that they're scoring well across all those different um, measurements that we have in the study. So uh, the reason why they're so successful is because um, they have the more uh, general, greater information is provided in the summary section. So it's easy to find. It's the first thing I see. Um, information is clearly bulleted. Um, you can see um, uh, uh, the information requirements information is very easy to read. Um, it's in a list form, so I can scan it really easily. And then I can um, click on more information to see greater details. They also use sticky navigation, which helps retain the context as users move up and down the page. And then the, the, the page structure itself places entry requirements at the top. So again, this is about understanding information needs of our audience and then structuring the content accordingly. Um, they also um, have very clear and simple um, language that they use. So Deakin, for example, use a lot of um, jargon, academic integrity, uh, four credit points. Um, you know, nobody really understands that, or there, there, there will be a, an audience who who don't understand that, and they're what they're doing is they're not helping them understand that here at all. They're not providing any contextual help to help them understand what that might mean and making them do a lot of work um, as opposed to, you know, University of South Australia, you know, applicants are required to have one of the following and completed. So their language is very much more straightforward. Um, and I suppose what University of South Australia also do is not just are you helping me find information that I want to know about specific information, but you're also um, helping me know what to do next. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, they have easy access to compare or view favorite courses so they can save this course and they can print or share or email the course. They can download brochures. Um, and again, you know, the sticky uh, navigation kind of highlights the next steps. Um, and then we can see that um, if the students not ready to apply. There are alternative steps um, that they can do. So again, you know, early interest. Here's the brochure. Do you have questions? Here's where you can inquire shortlisting, add to your favorite, and then you've decision made, apply here. 
Um, so this is a their compare tool. And uh, so we can see here they've got there's five degrees that they compare. They're showing three in the once. Um, you can see kind of the nice um, way to be able to easily compare those three different courses um, degrees to compare. And then what they also do is kind of give nice next steps at the end. So, OK, this is the one I want. What do you want to do next? Um, and as I said, mentioned earlier, kind of these are rarely offered on university websites, but they are used to great effect um, in other industries, for example, health insurance, where um, you know they have hundreds of, of health insurance products and they're trying to help people narrow down those options and then compare which ones is best for them. So ECU kind of have minimal um, information and simple page structure, so they use a lot of anchor links. Um, what they also do is we can see that, you know, they have the at the top an overview of the course and course ent uh, entry. So again, it's about information priorities. This is a common pattern across a lot of universities, this tab based um, approach when you're within a, in a course page. Um, and then we can see where people are going. So. 15% interact with the domestic international to toggle. So again, this is uh, what ECU do is they, they change the information based on the type of student that you are. And then 40% of scroll to the section covering special course notes, click on entry requirements. So again, they make it a little bit more difficult than um, UniSA, but uh, what they do do is uh, when they uh, get people down to those course entry requirements, um, they then um, cut the data by uh, the type of audience that you are. So uh, if you're a higher education student, these are your entry requirements are relevant to you. Um, if you are uh, work, um, if you're coming back, then these are the entry requirements specific to you. So, and what they do is they have, this is a general page. So they have, they navigate people away um, from the course page and then provide this generic information. Um, so we see Latrobe, they made some changes which um, drove some significant improvements. So we saw a really increase in effectiveness for them. So they put entry requirements uh, labeled to the, as the second spot um, across those uh, different categories on the page. Um, the domestic and international options, they've removed them. Um, and uh, you can see then that they have uh, used the kind of uh, progressive revelation pattern. So they, uh, the the accordion pattern to um, close up the admission requirements uh, based on audience and then you can uh, review those that are more applic most applicable to you then. So looking at kind of that um, matching product to needs, the entry requirements specifically, we can see that while the overall structure differs, the, they all follow the same information hier hierarchy. So course properties, facts and call to actions are consistently featured within the top section and then followed by more de detailed information on the course itself. Um, but structuring the content by audience also has prospects get to and understand information that's relevant to them rather than having to go searching through lots of content to find what's relevant to them or figure out what, what content within here is relevant to, to me. Um, we can see the kind of different patterns are adopted. So um, we've got the sticky nav, a progressive revelation, which can be used to good effect to help students get a an overview of the types of data that's there and then enable them to dig down into what's relevant to them. And then we see the use of comparison tools um, uh, being used on um, University of Southern Australia who perform very well in this area and how they're enabling students to kind of compare courses. And this is um, a feature we'll probably see, we expect to see a little bit more of um, coming out, even though it's pretty standard in other industries in higher learning. So that's really just a snippet of um, what I've showed you today. There's so much more, um, but unfortunately we're out of time. So really today we just had a high level general overview. It's kind of only a glimpse of the, the breadth and the depth that we do go into for our clients. Um, so when you when we have our subscribing clients get a full research, um, which you know is tailored analysis, not only on their sites, but also on those that are doing well and um, uh, who's performing um, you know, what, what the behavior of, of prospects and um, what they're doing. Um, you get immediate access to historical data. There's an online portal so you can interrogate the data to yourself. Um, once we uh, kind of pull together all those insights, we deliver that as part of a, a workshop so that we can cover kind of those industry, industry findings and we can have discussions around what it is we found 
um, and then we discuss the kind of recommendations that we have for improvement based on that insight and best practice. And we not only use that from the um, uh, higher learning industry, we also take uh, best practice and insights from other industries and apply them to the higher learning industry. Um, there's also um, additional advisory hours for deeper research. So if there's something specific you want to focus on, then uh, we can do that as well. Um, so, yeah, as I said, we'll be um, at the um, the Higher Learning American Conference. So, you know, um, feel free to talk to us there about our UK DSE program or um, get in touch with uh, Neil White, who's our uh, commercial director, and I'll give you his details at the end of this uh, webinar. So as I said at the beginning, I'm going to quickly run through our methodology so, so you can understand where all those scores um, have come from that we touched on earlier. So the DSE really um, covers the, uh, the study that you've just seen that the higher learning is based on, the consider and act here. Other, we have other stages covered in other products that we have, but for um, the DSE, it's consider, so it's how you're engaging students and helping them match a product or service to their needs, um, and uh, how easy it is for them to purchase a product or service they have from you. So we saw some of the, um, uh, the uh, categories that we covered there, so introducing options, evaluating options, um, channel selection, so how um, students are getting in touch with you, how you're uh, displaying that information on the site, how you make it easy for them to find things um, or not, as the case may be. <coughs> so the inputs that we have, as I touched on, consumer behaviour, so users are recruited to perform tasks on each site, and we've got success rates, efficiency, and paths to the site then measured. We've got their attitude, so survey questions pre and post interaction on the site measures the satisfaction, expectations and opinions. Uh, the audit, so we get them to rate the importance of elements during the task. And then um, we look at the confidence um, of them and we get verbatims. And then we have our best practice itself, which is uh, over 150 criteria. Um, all these then are our process. They're combined into the customer journey categories and stages. Uh, the scores are then weighted based on consumer needs and global views expertise. And then these produce the final DSE results that you've seen. So the moving parts are um, we conduct a features and functions uh, audit that's over 150 criteria weighted against the importance of that stage in the journey. Um, we have click streams and heat maps. Um, they provide a passive recording of behavior um, and then this is you know allows us to identify <clears throat> pathway pains, signposting call to action problems. So we look at the efficiency um, and effectiveness of um, participants doing the task. Um, consumers also audit specific pages, um, and this provides a benchmark to compare against competitors, which includes the home page and the comparison pages and the course page. So um, we recruit in market consumers. Um, we have to identify 95% of the issues. Um, it's completed at home in their natural environment, and we conduct the research on multiple devices. Um, both studies are separate, so you'd have what you've seen there as a result from the desktop study. And um, we also run mobile studies also. So hopefully, um, as I said, we'll be at the Higher Education Marketing Conference. Uh, my colleagues, Ger and Rebecca, will be um, speaking there. Um, we'll have a stand. It would be great to chat with you. I um, might see you around um, there anyway. Um, so my name is, is Jerry McGann, but Becca will also be there and Neil are commercial director. So thank you. Um, and here are Neil's details if you want to get in touch if you have anything there you've seen that you like or we might be at the conference. Thank you for your time today and enjoy the rest of your day.